Hey, everybody. Okay, we're going to get more into the hydraulic press build, and I thought what I'm going to do is we're going to go over the press as it stands today. So I want you guys to see what I've got, what I'm working with, and where I'm going to go with it. So you've already seen some of the components on the table, namely our pump and our cylinders, and I'll pan to those here a little bit. So we've got our pump, and this is a 10,000 PSI pump, and two cylinders capable of 10,000 PSI and a 50 ton load rating. Okay, so we've already talked about that. Behind there are some cables and hydraulic fluid and other little bits. Okay, so that's what's gonna power the press. So this press is a pretty common design. You've probably seen it. It's actually the swag, uh, you know, press brake kit. So this is common, they're all over the place. They use these three air over hydraulic uh, jacks. I keep saying motors, and when I say motor, I'm referring actually to the air over hydraulic motor on the back. But it uses three of these. And it works quite well. There's a lot of videos of how to do it, how to tune them, how to time them, how to get all that stuff done but they still are a little finicky and a little complicated. They work, don't get me wrong, they do work. But what we run into is the simple fact that because air supplies go to each one independently, they're gonna get the same air pressure, same air volume, but those individual motors on the back of these jacks can run at different speeds. Right? The jacks can have different internal resistances, et cetera, et cetera, things that just make it a little more difficult. Now, I've got such a good deal on this press that I could not buy just the fingers for what I paid for this whole thing, okay? So the fingers and the, a few other little pieces. So I've got all of this here, and what we're gonna do, as I stated, is we're gonna take these three motors out, and we're gonna put in two cylinders hanging from the top here and here, roughly, and we're gonna extend the rams on those cylinders to press on this bar. We may have to beef the bar up. We'll find out after we build the press and start trying to bend some thick material. I don't know if the ends are gonna move or bow or whatever might happen. But uh, this is basically, it's built out of angle. So there's a few things that do concern me. Uh, I just wanna show you here some of the welds. Let me see if I can get in closely here. Uh, we're gonna need some light in there. Let me try the other side. Okay, yeah, we're still gonna need some light. So you can see the welds, they're, they're blobby. Uh, they don't, I don't, it doesn't look like there's very good penetration on some of these, you know. Look down here, let me see. That one's not as bad, but um, they just aren't great overall. So with that, you know, we're gonna go and use it as is, okay? Most likely these welds are gonna be strong enough. You know, we're talking 60,000 PSI wire at a minimum that he probably used, probably an ER60 something that was used on this. So we should be good for that. Um, if something breaks, you know, we'll fix it. We'll weld it back later. Uh, but I might have to gusset the corners or something like that. So we're gonna go through and take these out. Again, we're gonna hang the cylinders from the top beam pressing downward onto this ram. And that pretty much is gonna fulfill the process. I mean, there's not a lot of, you know, building going into this since it's already built. We're modifying this design to use those new components. Okay, so that pretty much sums up the where we are with this, All right? So um, you've seen the other videos. This is the overview of the press just as it sits. We'll do more in the build. Uh, but what I'm getting into today is actually the hydraulic components that go into this and some of the gotchas that you're gonna need to know. Um, hydraulics are kind of voodoo black magic to me, honestly. I, I understand them, but I don't know them, if that makes any sense to you. Maybe as we talk through it, we'll get through there a little more. Um, one of the things that can be really, really distracting is when we see something like that pump over there that is rated at 10,000 PSI. Um, that's not 10,000 pounds as in like a great big huge SUV. That's 10,000 pounds per square inch that gets exerted by this pump. So we actually have to take that into account when we're designing this system because the PSI rating is related directly to the flow and velocity of the fluid flowing through it. And if you change things, you can actually generate unbelievably high pressures without knowing it. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna stop here and I'm gonna get over to the desk and we're gonna go through some of the fluid dynamics of doing something like this because I have to make a manifold for this. Uh, I, got, you know, I got two cylinders, one pump. The pump is designed to power one cylinder so, you know, we've got to basically have a way to tee this off. So I'm making a manifold. All right, so we're going to get back over to the desk. We'll get on the computer, and I'll show you some of the things that you need to consider if you decide to go this route. Okay. 
everybody, here we are back at the desk, and I'm going to try and uh, keep me on the camera sometime to uh, show you on my notepad some of the things that we were talking about with uh, hydraulic pressures and some of the things we have to do. And I'm going to get some um, screen sharing here to show you what we've done with, uh, with AI to do a lot of the math for me. Uh, I just wanted to avoid doing math, so why not? Uh, so what we've got is a, a bunch of different diagrams that I started with for making a manifold. Right? So these are just ideas noodling around that I had done. I have this chunk of cold rolled, uh, which we're going to use for the manifold. Okay, uh, I want to caution people against this. Uh, don't do what I'm doing. Just going to put it blunt here. Um, I've made a lot of manifolds, a lot of hydraulic manifolds. I've used steel, I've used aluminum, but generally we're talking hydraulics in things like tractors and other such events, um, where normally you're talking 3,000 PSI. Okay, that's pretty normal. Um, also, if you're going to do something like this, don't count on being able to go to like your local tractor supply and buy hoses. They are not uh, sufficient for a 10,000 PSI system. You're going to have to order them off the internet, get them custom made, something along those lines, or run hard lines yourself. And even with hard lines, you got to make sure you're getting the right stuff. You know, you can't just use brake lines. They're only going to go 1,000 PSI or so, maybe 1,600, something like that. So be very, very careful. Do your homework. High pressure hydraulics are nothing to mess around with. Hydraulic injection is a terrible thing. Um, it, you know, hydraulic fluid cutting right into your body. Think of it like a water jet saw. Yeah, same sort of idea when it hits your soft tissue, right in. Okay, so now with all that said, don't do what I'm going to do, but here's how you do it. Okay, so we're starting out with cold rolled. Uh, and if you do decide to do something like this, and you never should, um, don't use hot rolled steel. Okay, cold roll at a minimum, and if you want to, go ahead and get some stress proof, get some A2, get some higher quality steels. They don't need to be hardened after this, all right? They don't need to be hardened, but you need the extra strength. Um, most likely, a standard hot rolled steel might work, but cold rolled steel is about 20 or 30% higher in tensile strength than hot rolled steel. So, you know, for the tiny bit of extra cost, go with cold rolled steel. Okay, so here's a chunk I picked up from my local supplier. He had it sitting in his bin. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't get anything square. I wanted something square, but this is what they had. Okay, so we've got that. We've got our designs that I've sketched out. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. And this is extremely simple, very, very simplistic. So we've got just our cylinder here. And I'm going to drill three holes. We'll put three flats on it, okay? And in each of those flats, we're going to go ahead and drill and tap for a 3 8 NPT, which is what all of my fittings use. Okay? And then we're going to drill a hole from each center connecting all three. So really, we're making a T if you want to break it down. That's really all it is. Um, if I had something rectangular, I probably would have done a more functional shape. I could turn this or you know, mill this down to rectangular, but I don't need to. So whatever. Uh, when we go and put this in the actual press, we're going to put it in an area where if there is a failure, that nobody nearby will be injured. And I'll show you how we're going to do that when we get to the press build part. Okay. So what I wanted to talk about with hydraulic pressure. Um, the way that a hydraulic system works, uh, the magic of hydraulics has to do with the fact that fluids are incompressible and they want to exert their pressure in all directions at all times. So if we have a sealed system, and let's say I've got my pump running and there's nothing at the end of the cable, it's just sealed off. And we run the pump up and it goes 10,000 PSI. That's 10,000 PSI throughout the entire system. Doesn't matter where it's going, what tube it's in, it's 10,000 PSI, that's how fluids work. Uh, but when we start talking about PSI, again, my, my statement about it's not pounds like you think of in weight, it's pressure. So it, PSI is pounds per square inch. So when we're talking per square inch, we have to take in the volume of the receiving side of the fluid into the calculation. And this is the key to how hydraulics work. So in a regular hydraulic car jack, when you're pumping that handle up and down, what's happening is a very small piston is pushing a very small amount of fluid through a small chamber, and it's going into a larger chamber. Okay, that's why you can pump this one 300 times and this thing barely moves because you're taking a small amount of fluid at a time. But because we are going from a small chamber to a larger chamber, and remember the pressure is the same throughout the entire hydraulic system. 
So when this piston is pushing down, and I'm going to put, you know, at 100 psi, which is arbitrarily pick a number, 100 psi of pressure going through. It's 100 psi through the whole thing. So if I'm putting in 100 psi, how am I lifting an eight-ton truck? Okay. So that's where the magic comes in of hydraulics with the volume. So this tiny little piston in this tiny little diameter going through a tiny little channel, and if it goes into an area that has 10 times the surface area, because remember, we're talking pounds per square inch surface area, okay? So if I go to an area that is 10 times larger, I will get a tenfold increase in force. So if I'm putting in 100 pounds of force here, I'm going to get 1,000 pounds of force there. That's the simplistics of how hydraulics work. Now, the caution side of this, and I've got something I'm going to share on the screen here, is when we're talking about making a manifold, okay? We have to keep those pressures in mind. This isn't, uh, it's not trivial. We're talking with very large numbers here. So what we have on the screen is something I asked Bing to just do the math for me here. And what I told it is I want to find the force exerted on the walls of a passage that is one half inch by two inch that is supplied by a quarter inch line, all at 10,000 PSI, assuming a perfect incompressible fluid. No such thing, but it just makes the math easier. Okay. So if I have a quarter inch line that then empties into a half inch wide, so twice the diameter, two inch long passage, and then exits through another quarter inch hole. So uh, let me draw this, and maybe this will help make it a little bit more clear. But uh, please forgive my horrible drawings here. OK, so here's what I'm talking about. Let's say, hypothetically, this is our hydraulic system. We've got our pump over here, and it's sending 10,000 PSI fluid through. So it's 10,000 PSI here. It hits a larger chamber. It is 10,000 PSI here. And then it exits through a smaller area, and it is 10,000 PSI all throughout. Okay. Now, in this portion, in the quarter inch portion, I'll scroll on the screen here so you guys can see, this is where we asked Bing, all right, the total pressure exerted on all interior surfaces of a quarter inch diameter, two inch long, and I picked two inch long just for the comparison purposes, right, with a constant pump pressure of 10,000 PSI would be 3,928 pounds. Okay, 3,928 pounds of pressure on the interior walls of this area. Okay, now we've got a 10,000 PSI hose. It's 10,000 PSI. PSI is PSI, the hose is fine. Okay, but I'm going to scroll back up to my other one. When we reach this section here, okay, now this is interesting. When you double the diameter of a cyl cylinder, you effectively quadruple the surface area. Okay, so if you look on the screen, Total pressure exerted on all interior surfaces of a half inch by two inch passage with a constant pump pressure of 10,000 PSI would be 15,708 pounds. So we're going to go from 3,900 pounds of force exerted on the outer walls here to over almost 16,000 pounds in this section here. Okay, That is a massive, massive jump by just a slightly larger area. Okay. Now, the reason I'm talking about this is when we build our manifold, okay? I have to make sure to minimize at all costs those expansions, okay? So what happens is we're going to come in here and we're going to drill these 3 8 NPTs, okay? Right here, here, and here. Drill and tap those. If I made that a 3 8 hole all the way down here, a 3 8 hole all the way here, 3 8 hole all the way here, and tap the outside. What's going to happen is the pressure in here is going to skyrocket. We're going to have a really, really big increase in pressure in this area, and that pressure could be significant enough to possibly eject one of these um, plugs, causing you know catastrophic failure or uh, you know leaks or anything else like that. So what we want to do when we design this manifold is we want to have these passages approximately the same size as the hose. My hose is a quarter inch. So we're going to drill these 3 8 in here and tap them. But we're only going to drill them as deep as we absolutely have to to fit our fitting in. That way, when fluid is going in here and coming through, we have reduced 
the surface area, the larger piece, because it's coming from a quarter inch inside diameter hose, then it's gonna come through the fitting, and then there's gonna be a small gap at the bottom because we it's an MPT, it's a pipe thread. Uh, they, they work on compression, you know, that, that's how they, they lock themselves down. So when we get in here, we wanna minimize the amount of space. So there will be some, we'll have to have some, but the smaller the surface area, the smaller the increase in pressure inside this object. Okay, so that's what I wanted to talk about with hydraulics. If you do this, you have to be very, very careful that if you were to make a much larger internal volume, what you've essentially done is, um, you know, skyrocketed the pressure in that section and you could damage that vessel. You, you know, if, if you use, say, a piece of box tubing and welded some ends on it and decided you're going to, you know, use that for your manifold and put some fittings in it, et cetera, et cetera, um, the pressure inside that tube is going to get so high that you're probably going to cause some distortions or damage to that tube. So that's one of the reasons this chunk is so big. I wanted to have as much material outside you know, where I'm going to be working as possible. So we're going to go right in the center here with those three fittings, and we're going to drill into the center, and then those lines are going to come into here. So we're going to have a lot of steel around here to give it a lot of backing force, and we're going to keep the holes as small as we can. So I really hope that helped explain some of the safety things that you have to have with hydraulics, that it's pretty important uh, to, to really do the math on this and do the research and look at it. Don't just jump in assuming you can put everything together. You know, a lot of times we do that with air compressors and airlines, and even at that, those pressures, 100 PSI, 120 PSI, even up to 200 PSI, um, the materials have such a greater yield strength you know, 200 PSI and you're talking a material with a yield strength of 2,000, you know, tenfold. But when we're getting into here and we're talking about, you know, 10,000, 15,000, 20,000 PSI, I'm sorry, 20,000 pounds of pressure at 10,000 PSI injection force, we got to be sure we minimize that increase. So if you do that, do your homework, do your research, don't just grab a chunk of metal and start drilling holes and putting plugs and things into it. All right, so um, there's the whole big safety piece. Uh, for the next thing, I'm going to actually machine this into our, um, our manifold here, uh, but that's going to end this video. I just wanted to do the intro and a little talk about hydraulics, what we're doing, and why we're doing it. So if you do decide to take something like this on, please do your homework. Please understand the danger. Uh, you know, it's, it's a great thing to do. All the resources are out there, and Bing has been amazing. The new Bing chat, AI power, pulling me information like crazy, saving me all the math. It, it's been great. I absolutely love it so far. Use it. You know, use this thing. Double check it. Bing can be wrong. You know, do some quality checks other places, but so far it's been pretty good with this. So, hope you enjoyed it. If you've got questions, I am not a hydraulics expert by any means, but I'm good at research and I'm good at finding things out. Um, I'm an engineer by trade, so that's kind of what I do. So uh, if you've got questions, post them down below and I'll help you find answers. I'm not an expert in it, but I will definitely help you. If you've got questions on the machining piece, of course, you know, ask those, uh, you know, happy to answer those anytime I can, uh, but I will help all I can with the hydraulics. So um, thanks for tuning in. I really hope this helped. Uh, if you guys want to see more about how hydraulics work, I'd love to make videos on that. Comment down below. I didn't want to go too in depth in case people didn't want to. But, you know, if it's interesting, I'll go ahead and do it. So, again, thanks for joining, and I hope you enjoyed the video.